everyone, my name is Julia Jacobson and welcome to my channel. Today I will be showing you my sheet music digitizing and organization process, as well as a few tips for you in case you'd like to clean out those old sheet music binders at the far corner of your closet. Not speaking from personal experience or anything. In case you're new here, I make classical music college and lifestyle videos and I would love to see my face in your subscription box. This process took so long but I'm so glad I did it because I'm learning to declutter my life and I'm also improving my digital organization skills. I may or may not have had six hours of footage to speed up for you. I'm going to talk about my experience over the sped up footage, and I'm also gonna give you some tips in case you would like to do the same thing yourself. I also just wanted to mention that I am not at the point where I'm putting all of my sheet music on an iPad yet. I do not have a digital page turner, nor do I have a large enough iPad where I can easily read sheet music off of, but I do hope that I can do that at some point. So to start off this time lapse, I wanted to let you know what different apps I tried and found that worked best for this entire process. I tried about five different apps and I wanted to share that with you. Now these are all on the app store on Apple devices. I'm not sure how many of them are also on Android devices. I think my favorite one is available on Android. So Android users out there, you could take advantage of that one too. So the first one is probably the most accessible one for most people and that is Apple Notes. I personally use Apple Notes for quick scans that I need to send somewhere. As you know, I'm not using my printer for any of the scanning. Apple Notes is really great. The good thing about Apple Notes is that it scans pretty quickly and it doesn't require any payment. Um, I thought that that was very convenient about it and that's why I like it for quick easy things. Some negative things that I found with it is that the interface is worse because documents took up the entire screen and would make it hard to export everything later and there's also no way to select multiple documents at once. I found those things to be deal breakers because I needed to do this process somewhat quickly. There was no way for me to look at all the documents without having this long page of documents that shows you the full document instead of like the mini preview. So I thought that the interface itself was a little more difficult for a larger scale process like this. So that's why I did not necessarily enjoy Apple Notes as much. The next app that I tried was Scanner App PDF Document Scan. The good thing about this app is that it actually scans at a decent speed and you could also change the color preferences for the scans. But the bad things were that it initially asked for payment upon opening the app with only a three day free trial. And it makes it kind of ambiguous whether there is a free option of the app because they make the little X at the top left of the screen very difficult to see, which is already just like a bad sign. Like, and especially if if you notice that an app initially asks you for a paywall, you can probably assume that there are a lot of features that are locked behind that paywall that aren't available with the free option of the app. So I knew that right away that this app was probably not the best and I was probably losing a lot of options. The document quality is also pretty bad from what I was scanning. I don't know if this was an isolated thing, but I just did not like the document quality at all. And also you cannot zoom in on the document after you take a picture of it, so you can't really tell how good the quality is by zooming in but the zoomed out picture just doesn't it doesn't look good it is the end of day one and I only feel like I've made like a small dent in everything that I've done and honestly I haven't been doing this all day because today's has just been like a generally like bad day but we have those sometimes you know so I've gotten through about this many sheet protectors which looks like it's probably about maybe 50 to 100 I can't quite guess correctly but I've gotten through about that many and I still have all of these see that's how much I've gotten through I still have all the rest of these and then these two binders right here so this is the big stack of papers that I've gone through today um, it is really really big at least when I'm holding it in my hand it's heavy you probably think it's like tiny but I promise I made some kind of progress but this looks like it's going to take a lot longer than I thought, which means I might have to wake up early tomorrow and do it. <sighs> now to get back to the thing I simultaneously love and hate at once. That bad boy and those bad boys.
The next app I tried was simply called Scanner, and I think the maker of it's like Lumi or Looney, something like that. The good things I found with this app was that there's different options for different types of scans. So you could do like a business card scan or a receipt or stuff like that. Um, and you could also zoom into the document, which is pretty important for me. But it was very similar to the other scanner app in that it initially had a paywall, and the document quality was also not great. And it also has ads and Especially with this app, unlimited scans were behind the paywall, so I could not scan a large amount of files at once and continue to do that without paying. I found that to be just a negative part and I did not enjoy that aspect of the scanner app. The next app I tried was Cam Scanner PDF Scanner app. The good thing about this app is that you have the ability to add a filter and also adjust contrast with scans as well as a few other things. And it also has pretty good scan quality. And like the app before it, you can scan different types of documents, IDs, PDFs, etc. There are several import options, which I thought was kind of cool. You can import to text or to Word, to Excel, etc. Although, honestly, those types of document formats are pretty outdated. I would think that hopefully I could get some sort of Google option instead of Word or Excel. And since Word and Excel are also both behind a paywall, that's just not great. The bad things about this app, it initially asked for payment for the premium option, just like the other apps. And I had to click around to get to the free version like I did with the others. There's a lot of features locked behind the paywall and the interface is also slow and inefficient so this app just overall was not great they initially had a lot of options but some of those options were locked behind the paywall even though you could see it and it was just not great the next and final app was the adobe scan digital pdf scanner this is my most favorite app and as you could tell this is the one that i used for most of my scanning the great things about it it is free and i have no adobe subscription i have had an adobe subscription before it's free to create an adobe ID ID. All you have to do is create an Adobe ID and everything is free. So it's very simple. There's no payment required and it doesn't even ask for any kind of payment. There's also a lot of touch up options for your documents and it also has a very high quality scan. You could also zoom into your documents and reorder pages. The documents are easily exportable and you get unlimited scans for free. You get everything for free. It also has a very efficient document interface and you can select and share multiple documents at once. It also has text recognition and file naming preferences. It has no ads, I almost never had to adjust the document after scanning. So Adobe Scan is very, very, very great. The one and a half negative things about it was that it was a little bit slower than some of the other apps to recognize the document, which I do admit was a negative, a pretty big negative. But honestly, the good outweighs the bad. And I thought that this one was just so much better compared to all of the other apps and so much more reliable. Another thing is that you also have to create an Adobe ID. So you can't start scanning right away. But the great thing about the Adobe ID is that every all your scans save on Adobe and you could always refer back to them later so it's very convenient. So yeah, I picked the Adobe Scan for this entire project and I found it to be very great. It had no paywall, I didn't even ask for any kind of payment and it was just the perfect thing. And I believe it is available on Android devices too. So this is my progress from the second or third day. I did take a few breaks between the days but I think that this is pretty good progress and it's quite a thick stack of paper if you ask me. Now I'm going to give you some tips on this entire process. So number one, use something dark colored to scan your documents over. This will save a lot of time because you won't have to worry about the app confusing what to scan. As you can see, I used a dark gray plastic bin cover and it worked really, really well. I almost never had to adjust each of the documents. It was very, very nice to have. And in case you don't have like a solid surface, you could just use an old shirt or something and that works just as well. Number two, make sure that your device is parallel to the ground when taking photos to avoid certain parts of the document being blurry. The focus should be equal among the whole document. Now, I realized that I did have to retake a few times because I would hold my phone too close to myself and it would be at more of an upward angle and that was negatively affecting the scans because the top parts of each scan were a little blurrier than the bottom because my phone was closer to the bottom. So you want to make sure that your device is completely parallel to the ground so that there's an even focus among the whole document. Number three is a quick one. Just double check the document before you save it. On Adobe Scan, you'll get a preview after each scan and you can zoom in and just make sure that everything looks good. So just double check every single time because you don't want to have to be put in a situation where you need to refer to that scan later and one page is a lot blurrier than you expected it to be. Now I can tell you that my hands were pretty shaky throughout this entire process and the scans were still really high quality. So most of the time your document 
documents should be fine even if you are kind of shaky, but that's just a thing I wanted to warn you about. Number four, I often made the mistake of starting to scan new music without saving the scan for the old music so it added to the previous scan. Just be aware of that. Make sure you save your document before you start on the next one because I made that mistake a lot and I had to delete pages and restart and it was just a little bit of a hassle. So just double check that you're doing that correctly. Number five, if you have handwritten notes on certain pieces that the scanner isn't picking up, just take a picture of those pieces in addition to scanning them and store those pictures too so you can refer back to those notes. In my case, I wrote notes from an orchestral excerpt class within the sheet music for the class. And if you know anything about scanning documents, you know that if there is pencil marking and the ink is much darker than the pencil marking, normally the pencil marking will not get picked up. And that happened for one of my pieces. So just double check if you have notes in your music that you think are super duper valuable, then actually take pictures alone of those notes just so that you can access them that way. Also, another thing to improve this in case you're wondering is use darker pencils when you are writing in your pieces because it's, first of all, it's easier to see while you're playing any markings. And second of all, if you scan that music, those markings will go in better. I personally use Blackwing pencils that I bought from Charm Music and those have been working really, really well for me and those are very dark. So I recommend maybe picking up a few of those. They are a little pricey for pencils, but I think they're worth it because they'll last you several, several years. All right, and number six, I kept a few pieces of sheet music because they were all movements of a piece either pre-taped together or were original scores. I'm not 100% sure why I couldn't part with these, but I think it's because they had some sentimental attachment to them. And just keep in mind, that if you do have original scores of something that you may just want to hold on to it because it is an original score and you do not want to get rid of it because either you or somebody you know paid some money for that score. I mainly digitized copied sheet music and then I just kept original scores or I guess sentimental scores. Next we're going to talk about the categorizing and organizing process for digitizing your music. So now we're getting into actually putting the files into your computer and then into your hard drive, renaming them and organizing them. Now I don't plan on going fully digital with my sheet music library yet, but I'm just trying to find an easy storage solution so that I can have access to the music without taking up three binders worth of space in my closet. Next, I highly recommend that you use a hard drive for all of your scans. I've used Google Drive and iCloud for documents and I've even paid for subscriptions to get more space, but the space is never enough and I don't anticipate ever needing access to those documents urgently. So keeping them on a two terabyte hard drive works best for me. I will include a picture of the hard drive that I personally used. I bought it off of Amazon and it has served me really, really well so far. And I've had pretty much no negative experiences with it. I do have to say that I did have to pick up an adapter so that it could go into my computer, but otherwise it was a great investment. Another thing, I would go through each file and rename them to include the composer and the name of the piece and also shorten the file name where it is convenient. So in case you want to shorten the word movement, I would just put MVMT. I also recommend grouping pieces into folders by either composer or type of work, so orchestral, chamber music, solo, etc., based on what is easiest to access. So here is me airdropping all of the files into my computer and then copying them over to my hard drive. I found the airdropping process to be very easy and I'm very lucky that Apple products have such a genius feature. And then I am renaming all of my files and also creating folders for all of the composers and then placing the appropriate files into the folders. I found this process to be especially tedious because there were so many files to go through, but the preview option was especially helpful because I didn't have to open up the entire document just to figure out what the actual document was. But it was a pretty long process, but it was good. <laughs> All right, so now that we have this huge stack of sheet music, it's time to go and recycle it. I did take out most of the tape, staples, or paper clips because I know those things aren't as easily recyclable as paper. If you do this clean out process, I do recommend that you try to recycle as much as you can because we can accumulate a lot of sheet music in our lives, and I certainly have. This is seven years worth of sheet music. But yeah, let's get rid of all of this paper. <laughs> Time to put all of these papers in the recycling. Here we have our lovely recycling bin. Thank you, recycling bin, for being so great. So you may or may not be sitting on the trash bin, but here we are putting stuff in the recycling. All of these papers. 
mission accomplished. So that is all that I have for you guys today. This took a really, really long time, which is why you may have noticed that I haven't posted in like a week. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give this video a like and also subscribe if you enjoy watching this kind of content. I post one, two to three videos a week. It just kind of depends on what my schedule is like, but I always post at least weekly. And comment down below how you organize your sheet music. As you saw, I personally put it all in binders and I do the same thing with concert programs and I just put it all in sheet protectors. But I know that other people put it in boxes and do other sorts of things with their sheet music or they just digitize it immediately and then get rid of it. So please let me know how you store your sheet music. I hope you all have a great day and I wish you the best of luck in organizing your own sheet music collection. Bye. Thank you.